This is my second project using the new Vita Flora Paint Inlay, which is a limited release collaboration between Iron Orchid Designs and Debbie Beard of Debbie's Design Diary and DIY Paint. Of course, the very first thing I'm going to do is to clean my piece of furniture both inside and out. I am using Crud Cutter to clean the outside and I'm going to give that a rinse with some clean water when I'm done to make sure that there is no residue left. Leftover residue can absolutely interfere with the adhesion of your paint. Welcome back my friends and if you're new here, my name is BJ, my business is called Junked Up, and I do a little thrifting, a little creating, and a little painting. So the very first thing I'm going to do is to get a base coat on my piece of furniture. I am using Queen Bee from DIY Paint, which is this beautiful golden yellow. I am not particularly concerned with getting a smooth finish or having brush strokes because this is going to be a layered finish anyway. So I have very little Queen Bee left and I want to get a second coat. So that's why I picked Liquid Sunshine. I'm not telling you this is the way you have to do it. I'm just sharing with you my transparent process. Um, I had a little bit of Queen Bee left in that jar, so I'm kind of going back and forth between the Queen Bee and the Liquid Sunshine, just so I can get a mostly full coverage base coat on this before we layer it up. My inspiration for the overall color scheme for this piece came from those two pieces of furniture, which are on the back of the packaging of the Vita Flora paint inlay. I happen to know exactly what those colors are because those happen to be my projects that are on the back of the packaging. My projects are always an evolution. So while I start with a general idea, I just let the project develop on its own as I'm progressing through. So I am starting with a mixture of cowgirl coral and faded burlap, both from DIY paint. And I know that that's what I started with on that hutch that's on the back of the packaging. I'm not exactly sure which parts I want to be this pinky, orangey, corally color. So I'm gonna paint these parts first and then kind of assess where I wanna go with it from here. I know that I will be doing a wet distress on all of those details, like the feet and the legs and the trim. So I chose to only layer that coral color on those parts to kind of save myself some paint since I got scolded in my last video for wasting a lot of paint. So since the paint inlays need to be put down into wet paint, I need to do assess first where I wanted to put each of the inlays. The nice thing about these is you can cut them up and you can create a whole bunch of different designs. So I cut up a bunch of pieces and kind of decided where I wanted to put everything before I started my next coat of paint. The inspiration project on the back of the packaging, that cute little beachy side table, which I have a video for and I will link in the description box below, was just farm fresh. I knew that's not what I wanted to do, so I chose two other complementary colors to the farm fresh, which is the apothecary and the salty kiss. Typically when I am blending, I am using a single brush for each color, meaning each color has its own brush. So a total of three brushes in this case, and then use a separate neutral brush to blend those colors together. I was incredibly lucky to have been gifted that awesome brush by my friend, Kristana, and it is a fantastic brush for blending large flat surfaces or even not flat surfaces, but I had this large expanse on the top of the cedar chest, and I knew this brush would be perfect for blending that all out. So I just squeezed a bunch of paint on the top, used some smaller brushes to just spread that paint out a little bit, and then used my big brush called Trust the Process from Cristana from Bella Renovare to blend that all in together. One of the tricks to getting a successful outcome with the paint inlay is to lay the inlay into wet paint. The paint doesn't need to be super thick, it just needs to be wet. 
So I knew ahead of time which sheet I wanted to use on the top. And then as soon as I'm done blending that out, I go ahead and I lay that inlay right into that wet paint. And then I spritz the back and I just blot, blot, blot. What I'm doing is activating the paint that's on the inlay through the carrier sheet. And I'm basically just repeating this entire process everywhere I know I'm gonna put an inlay. So having predetermined where the inlays were gonna go is important. For the center panel, I'm blending out some of that cowgirl coral faded burlap mixture with some fire starter and a little bit of liquid sunshine. And I just go in different directions until I get the blend that I like. It is still wet, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put my inlays in. And just keep in mind that if you're going to put different pieces of inlay up against each other like this, like you can see it right there, I need to make sure that that little bit of the inlay actually touches the paint and not the carrier sheet from the other part of the inlay. So I activate the paint inlay by getting it wet and blotting, making sure that there's good contact from the paint inlay into my wet paint. I'm gonna leave that to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend out those other couple places where I'm leaving that corally color until the inlay is dry and then it's time to remove it. So you just wanna spritz the back again or get it wet so that you can release it and it should be a pretty simple process. I'll show you one more time on the side because I know there's a lot of hesitation with the inlays because it's new and people don't really get it and it really is quite easy to do. It's really not tricky at all and you can reuse the inlay up to about three times. Now the image is going to get lighter with each use but I have pieces of inlay that I have used three times. So as I'm letting all of the inlays dry I'm going to go ahead and move on to wet distress the places that I don't have an inlay. You do need to be really careful because the paint that's in the inlay can be reactivated. And so everywhere that I'm wet distressing, I am making sure that I am staying away from any place where there is an inlay because I don't wanna smear that and destroy the inlay that I just put in there. I did a little bit of experimenting. So I didn't like the way that the bird was just kind of hanging out and it didn't feel grounded. So I decided to cut a little branch off of another sheet of the inlay Mind you, these are supposed to go into wet paint, right? So what I did, since it's DIY paint, is a clay-based paint and I can reactivate that with water, I just used that little artist brush to get my paint wet. And then I went ahead and sprayed the back side. So I sprayed the paint side of my paint inlay to make sure that there was enough moisture there. Put that down, then went ahead and blotted on the back side with a little bit of water. And I did the same thing here. So this is all dry paint at this point and I decided after the fact that I wanted to add some more inlays. And I'm really happy to say that everywhere that I had decided after the fact to add some inlays worked like a charm. Gave my piece just a little bit of a sanding just to smooth things out and make sure everything feels really good. I'm probably using about a 220 grit sandpaper here. At this point in the project, all of my inlays are on and they are all dry. So I need to seal that up. So before I can top coat or wax or do anything else to this plate piece, I need to make sure that those inlays aren't gonna go anywhere and that they're not gonna smear. So I just use a fixative. So once you have sealed your inlay, you could absolutely just go ahead and seal up your piece and be done. But this is me, and I'm a stickler for details, and quite frankly, this is the fun artistic part that I like to do. I am using the DIY Making Powder in the color Pool Party, and a small artist brush, and some water, just to add a little bit more and a little bit of extra. I have used the making powder in a couple of my other videos. I will link those below. And I also use the same color making powder on the inspiration table for this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and admit just another oops that I did on this project in that I was very heavy handed with the water. And that resulted in a little bit of an issue that I will show you a little bit later on and how I fixed it. But this was entirely way too much water that I was adding here. What I really should have done is just added a little misting of water and then used my brush or a cloth or my finger to kind of move that making powder around. So 
So again, because I'm extra and this is the kind of stuff that I like to do, I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing. I'm using Firestarter from DIY Paint and I'm using a stiff bristle. This is a flat top brush, like a stencil brush to add just that much more dimension. I will tell you it's probably best to wait until everything is dry. My making powder and water concoction wasn't dry here and I thought I would keep trying to do it and so I oopsied literally three times. One of my best tips for dry brushing is, well, number one, have very little paint on that brush. And number two, start off with a really light pressure because you have the most amount of paint on your brush. And then as you're offloading that paint onto your project, you can push harder and harder. And I like to use a scrubbing motion to really work that dry brush paint in. Earlier when I said I used way too much water, this is what happened. So it caused some of the veneer on my piece to lift. It's nothing that a little bit of wood glue in a syringe couldn't fix. I just squirted the wood glue under there, put some painter's tape on it, and let it dry overnight. So once I am satisfied with how everything looks, it is time for me to do my final, let's seal it all up and be done with this project. I'm gonna start out using some clear wax. You could use any kind of top coat that you like. I really like the DIY paint clear wax. It really is something very satisfying and magical when you hit your DIY paint with a top coat, how it just really wakes everything up. So you can see how I'm going directly over the inlay with my clear wax, and I can do that without anything smearing because I sealed it first with that fixative. I let my clear wax set up overnight, give it a nice light buffing, and it's time for me to add some dark wax. Again, you could skip this step if you wanted to. I really like dark wax. I think it does a really nice job of adding just that much more depth and dimension. For any of the products that I am using on today's project, including the paint inlay, you can get those on my website, junkeduphome.com. I'll put the link in the description. Since this is my project and I am my own boss, I made the executive decision to use dark wax over the entire top of the piece. And I can do this because I used clear wax first. You wouldn't want to go ahead and just do dark wax, but I used my clear wax first and then came over that with dark wax over the whole top. Here's a little magic for you. That clear wax kind of acts like a little bit of a magic eraser and it takes off that dark wax that's just floating on top and it leaves you with this. So all of those brush strokes that I had from applying the paint in the first place, the dark wax sits all in there and really makes it look cool. I also had a couple areas where I really didn't like the way the dark wax was sitting. It was just too much of a inorganic straight edge for me. So a little bit of clear wax on a cloth, wiping back some of that dark wax, and it looks great. I let all of the wax dry overnight, come back the next day, buff everything, and we are finished. Thank you so very much. I know this one was a little bit longer than some of my other videos, but this piece had a lot going on. So thanks for sticking around, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Bye.